In this lesson, we look at what are considered simple equations, where there really isn't a lot involved in the equation. Maybe you could even do them in your head. Uh, but what I want you to keep in mind is that this is only the first lesson. So it is considered a stepping stone for the more complex lessons that are coming up. So the structure that I'm going to ask you to do in this lesson might seem like a lot and you might think, oh, why do I have to do this? It seems like a lot of work. I can just do a quick little, you know, calculation in my head to get the answer, but it's going to set up the structure that we're going to need in future lessons. The first thing that we need to talk about are what inverse operations are. So do you know what an inverse operation is? Well, an inverse operation, if you don't, is an operation that undoes another operation. So I've written down that they're operations that undo each other. And addition is the inverse of subtraction, and multiplication is the inverse of division. So you would use one if you want to get rid of the other. So let's look at some simple equations and how you solve them. Well, there are two sides to an equation, and the two sides are determined by where the equal sign is. So I usually like to draw a line down the equal sign because it helps me keep in mind of where my inverses have to happen. So you say to yourself, self, what operation, here's the variable, what operation do I have? And the operation that you have here is subtraction. Well, if you look at our inverses, if you have subtraction, you would want to remove it by doing addition. So since 7 is being subtracted, I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and that's why I have the line so I know where to add it. And then you cross that out, and the only thing that's left on the left is x, and negative 6 plus 7 is 1. So... It says to check. A check is the instant answer key. You'll know whether you have it right by plugging it in and seeing if it works. So I take the original equation, but now I know what x is. So I don't have to write x minus 7. I can write 1 minus 7 equals negative 6. And then you do a little calculation. You say, what is 1 minus 7? And since 1 minus 7 is negative 6, you show your reader that you got negative 6 when you did this math. And negative 6 was on the right, so you put a little check mark or a smiley face or whatever you want to put to show that the, the sides are equal. All right, if you want to pause the video and try letter B on your own, you're more than welcome to. If you don't, follow along with me. I'm going to drop a line down the equal sign, and I have to determine what operation I have. I have addition, so it's inverse is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract... 3.4 because that will remove the 3.4 that I have next to the variable. The goal is to get the variable by itself. So since I did that to the left, I have to do it to the right. So you have y on the left, and then you get your calculator out to do that. Or, I mean, if you can do it in your head, go for it. Um, I'm going to pause right now for a second while you get your calculator. Okay, so now 0.5 minus 3.4 is negative 2.9. Now, if you get a decimal, a lot of students freak out and they think they have it wrong. So let's actually confirm. So I'm just going to write that a little neater. Let's actually confirm, and the way that we confirm is by checking. So I'm going to rewrite the equation, but instead of y, I'll put negative 2.9. So negative 2.9 plus 3.4 I'm rewriting the equation exactly how I found it. Now I'm going to calculate this. What is negative 2.9? I'm typing it in my calculator right now. Plus 3.4, and I get 0 0.5. So I get 0 0.5 on the left, and luckily that's what the right side says, so I know it worked. All right, the next equation that we're going to look at in letter C has a number next to a letter, a number touching a variable is the operation multiplication. So I'm going to drop my line down the equal sign, and now I'm going to realize that since I have multiplication, the inverse is division. So what I'm going to do to both sides is the advanced division bar. 
I'm not going to do this symbol. Don't use that symbol because that's a symbol that you use in the elementary school. So I want you to be more advanced. This is how people write it in high school. Let's get ready for high school. So I'm going to divide the other side by 0 0.09. Well, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So I need my calculator handy and I'll type in 1.8 divided by... 0 0.09 and I get 20. So let's check to make sure it works. I'm going to rewrite the equation 0 0.09 but instead of W I'll put 20. I'm going to use parentheses instead of the X. If I use the X it's going to look like a variable because we use variables a lot now in the upper grades so we stop using the X because it looks like a variable. So let's get our calculator powered up 0 0.09 times 20 and I got 1.8 and that's what I wanted 1.8 on each side proves to me that it worked. All right, the little memory bubble in letter D is asking you if you remember how to inverse a fraction because this is a fraction it's being multiplied by the variable n. A number, right, a fraction is just a number. A number next to a variable is multiplication. So let me ask you, do you remember how to inverse a fraction? Well, the answer is multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal is when you flip. Now, this might be something that you want to make a little annotation, right? For extra credit, we talked about that. For annotation credit, you might want to write down what a reciprocal is. A reciprocal is the fraction upside down. So I'm going to multiply by negative 4 thirds. Sorry, that says negative 4. All right, so I'm going to put the, well, it's good enough. I'm going to put the negative 2 over 1 so I can multiply the fractions. Oh, I forgot my line. Shame on me. Now, these fractions cancel each other out because when you multiply it, reciprocals, they eliminate each other. So I just have n, and now I'm going to multiply. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 and 3 times 1 is 3, so circle that. Now you might be freaking out because it's a fraction answer, so we're going to plug it in and check. That's how you know that you got it right. So I'm going to rewrite the original equation. Negative 3 fourths, and I'll use the dot just to spice things up a little, right? I know you know the dot also means multiplication. And I am not using a mixed number or a decimal version of 8 thirds because as you get into high school, they will want you to use fractions for everything rather than decimals or mixed numbers. So we're going to get in the habit of doing that and type 8 thirds. All right, so now we have to multiply. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. 4 times 3 is 12. Oh, I see it. Negative, right? Do you see it? Negative 24 divided by 12 is negative 2. So it worked. What's great about a multiple choice question when it's related to equations is you can take the choices and just plug them in. Now you obviously have to follow proper order of operations when you do this, right, PEMDAS. Um, but I want you to pause the video and I want you to plug in the choices. Hopefully you're a good guesser and you pick the right choice relatively shortly. Um, I want you to plug your choices in, see which one works, and when you think you have the answer, play. So hopefully you picked letter A, um, and I know I just told you not to use this um, elementary school division symbol, but we used it here because you're still familiar with it. And you had to divide first before you were allowed to add. That's order of operations. And hopefully you didn't get too freaked out when you got 20 over here because when you divide by a decimal, the number actually gets bigger. That's something interesting that happens with decimals and fractions. All right, when you're ready, let's move on to the last example, example three. The melting point of a solid is the temperature at which the solid becomes a liquid. The melting point of bromine is 1 30th of the melting point of nitrogen. Write and solve an equation to find the melting point of nitrogen. So 
since we're still kind of getting uh, familiar with equations, I have this little word set up. This is how we're going to write our equation. You don't have to write it out of thin air. This is the setup, and then we'll use our inverses to solve. So the first thing that I need to know is the melting point of bromine. So it's not in the story anywhere, but it is in the picture over here. You see negative 7 Celsius. So uh, first thing I'm going to write is negative 7. When you see the word is in math, that means to put an equal sign. If you didn't know that, that might be something that you want to uh, highlight or annotate. Uh, then it tells us to put the number 1 30th. When you see the word of in math, it means multiply. If you don't know that, you want to write that down. Of means multiply, and I'm going to use the dot instead of an x because x will now start looking like a variable. And the melting point of nitrogen, um, it's not in the story. Oh, that's actually what we have to find. So, duh, that's why it's not shown anymore. So let's use n for nitrogen. You can use whatever variable you want. So now... You have multiplication, right? A number next to a variable means multiplication. And hopefully you remember just from a few minutes ago how you inverse a fraction. The way that you inverse a fraction is by multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 30 over 1 on both sides. And I'll put the negative 7 over 1 just so that they're both fractions. Then I'm familiar with that. So I get negative 210 over 1 equals, those cross out because they're reciprocals, and you just have n. So that's just negative 210. So the answer to the question, what is the melting point of nitrogen, the answer is negative 210 degrees Celsius. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.